What's up, everyone? Welcome to a very special episode of Draft Day Dynasties. I'm C. Jackson Cowart, the community manager here at Wolverine Studios, and I appreciate you joining us for the 22nd episode of Draft Day Dynasties and the first showing off Draft Day Sports College Football 2023. If you haven't seen any of our previous episodes in the series, you can catch up on all of those on our YouTube channel, and you can always catch us live every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on the official Wolverine Studios Twitch channel. This is a special episode for the series as we're shifting gears after two uh, eventful, to say the very least, uh, seasons as the head coach of Hawaii in Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2022, which, if you haven't seen that already, you should definitely check that out. Uh, But we're starting a new career here with College Football 2023, which kicks off first access on Friday, that's tomorrow if you're watching live, and is set for a full launch in two weeks on August 26th. So this will be my first extended playthrough with this game, and really for the series as a whole. I've been playing the college basketball game for almost a decade. I've played all four of the major titles, uh, you know, pro football, pro basketball, college football, college basketball, uh, across that time uh, at varying points, but never to the extent that I'm going to dive in here. So uh, this is just as exciting for me to play this game as it is for you guys to get an extended first look at the latest release from Wolverine Studios. Uh, I think we're going to have a ton of fun tonight and throughout this entire coaching career, and I really want to hear from all of you guys in the chat. It always makes for a fun episode whenever you guys are chiming in. Uh, I know we have a few regulars that join each week. Bill Dozer, Breeze, you guys are my homies in the last uh, series with Hawaii basketball, so hopefully you guys will be uh, chiming in here, and we'll get some new fresh faces too. Maybe some of you uh, who are bigger football fans, maybe some of you are just learning about the stream for the first time. If you are, say hello. Uh, you know, Make your presence known in the chat. Get a little wave emoji. Uh, share your favorite memories from our first two seasons of Hawaii. Uh, mine is definitely when Craig Willis hit that buzzer beater and then became absolutely unplayable for the rest of the season. Uh, and, and again, if you're joining, you don't have any memories here, you're a little nervous in the chat, that's fine. Just say hello, uh, and, uh, and I think we're all going to have a good time here. Uh, and pardon me in the background is my cat. I know it sounds like she's locked in the closet, but she's actually uh, she's just trying to get some food. So don't worry about that. But uh, let's get started here in just a moment. Before we do, I want to quickly shout out our newest video series, Draft Day Academy. We've had a few episodes up for a couple weeks now, uh, focused on helping newcomers and veterans alike learn the tips, tricks, and inner workings of Wolverine Studios' latest releases. We've had a couple episodes on uh, on the College Basketball 2022 game. We have more on the way for that, as well as for College Football 23 and future titles. So definitely check out that YouTube series. Check out past episodes of this. But let's dive right in here. Uh, so we're on the welcome screen. As you can see, I have a little test run here. Uh, and bear with me because this is uh, technically a beta build that we're playing on here. Uh, it's a pre-first access build. Everything's pretty stable, pretty solid from what I've seen. Uh, but if there's anything wonky here, it's probably either going to be a function of this game being pre-release uh, or a function of me being, uh, you know, not not the most veteran to this game. Like I said, you know, I've just been playing with this this week and diving in. And might I say, I have a feeling I'm about to lose uh, the next year of my life to this game because I, <laughs> there is so much in here. So let's go ahead and hop in here with a new league. Go career mode. I always like to do this. I know some of you guys like to play sandbox uh, and be able to, you know, whether whether you want to control multiple teams or you just don't want any of the pressures of uh, trying to maintain a career. Multiplayer, obviously. There's some multiplayer leagues out there for Wolverine Studios that are incredible. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and do a career mode here. We're going to call this Draft Day Dynasties. Uh, for your own Sims, your own careers, I would recommend maybe messing around with some of this stuff in terms of if you want a custom coach's file, custom schedule file. I know the mod community is incredible uh, for this game and all of the others, especially in the college games, really making a more immersive experience. But for the function of this series, we're just going to leave all these things alone. Uh, 14 playoff. This is actually a new feature, this uh, this version. You can do a 16-team playoff, which I know is something the community has been asking for for a bit. Um, I think this is such an awesome feature to be able to kind of play this out, whether you're doing a historical sim and want to see, hey, what, uh, what would happen, you know, if maybe Boise State had a, had a chance to, uh, you know, crack the, the playoffs in past years, or if you're looking ahead to the future, kind of seeing the direction that college football is going and thinking, hey, you know what, we're going to have more than four teams in contention each year, uh, which seems inevitable at some point. But again, for the purposes of this, 
We're going to go ahead and leave this at the 14 playoff. We're going to start with 2022. Football is right around the corner, so I think that that's pretty fitting. And we're going to go ahead and check this box that will ensure at some point that I'm going to be fired because I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, so we will start with that. Already in the chat, Sturgeon saying, love your team's work, FYI. Just wanted to show some love. Appreciate that, Sturgeon. Uh, I know that's directed probably uh, 95 to 98% to the devs who are really doing all of the work here. Uh, to make these incredible games, to make these awesome experiences that honestly I'm as fortunate as you guys to be able to play. Uh, but we really appreciate that. Uh, appreciate you hopping in the chat, showing some love here. Uh, and all of you guys, I know that uh, Sturgis isn't the only one watching here. Uh, they're just the only one that's uh, piped into the chat here. So appreciate all of you for checking this out. So uh, a lot going on in the back end here is generating new recruits, generating new everything here as we get this going. I am so so, so, so excited. Uh, I think the last time that I really did a career in this game, I want to say it might have been two or three years ago. I know it was before a massive uh, interface shift in this game. Uh, you know, the last time that I really kind of dove in and put my blood, sweat, and tears into this. Uh, I played a little bit last year, but I got sucked into the uh, college basketball game, which came out not too much later. Uh, but man, I am excited for this. So, it is time to select our team. And there are a ton of options. Obviously, we can take over any of these schools here. I love that it shows the prestige uh, right here. shows the fun little logos, the default logos here, which uh, all are a nice nod to their, uh, their counterparts, if you will. I see Hawaii here. I'm really tempted to do Hawaii, but I think we've all seen enough of the Spartans. Uh, you know, I think, I think we know what that story looks like from the college basketball one. So I'm going to shift gears here, but it's not going to be too dissimilar and in fact i'm going to pick a school that is near and dear to my heart uh i have a lot of friends in real life that went to this school i actually live just a few miles away from this school uh, a few years back and that is san diego state i think that there is a massive opportunity to turn san diego state into a brief football power or at least to use them as a stepping stone for my next job so uh, don't tell the AD that, but I think San Diego State is what we're going to roll with here. It's a fun, uh, non, non-Power non 5 conference team that still kind of flirts with some Power 5 moments uh, off and on. So uh, pretty excited for this. Nice fertile recruiting ground in California and San Diego. Uh, I mean, being close to San Diego, LA, that whole area. Um, you know, this game uses GPS proximity for recruiting, which is one of my favorite elements of recruiting in this game. So... Uh, I think this should be a pretty fun playthrough. OMG, WTF, please die. That's uh, certainly a nice Twitch name there in the chat, given, a, I think, a robot emoji. Not sure what that's in reference to, but I do appreciate you hopping in the chat here. All right, let's see. So first name, going to go Jackson Cowart. Uh, that, that is my name. So if you guys are looking me up, shout out. That's me. Experience. We're going to go with zero. All right, we're going to be a little true to life here. I am not... Indeed, a college coach, despite what you may think. Uh, reputation, we have this at 66. I think that's a little bit high. Uh, I've never been a coach before. You know, I don't want to cut my legs out from under me here and make this too low, but uh, I think we go with a 60 reputation. I think that's fair. Uh, for age, this is, this is a tough one. Uh, I always like the idea of being kind of a boy wonder in these things, uh, but I don't really want to be too young as to uh, ruin the illusion here of being an actual college coach. So let's say I'm 34, all right? Not quite the ripe old age of 35, just getting there. Uh, you know, but I've lived a few years, right? So I think that's appropriate. Uh, come over to base salary here. There's no way they're paying me $5 million right away. I think we should go with $3 million there, three-year contract. That seems appropriate. And then the rest is just kind of up to you and up to me. I mean, you can you can really set these whatever you want. Uh, you don't want to be too OP by setting these high. I know these are all on a scale of 1 to 10, but probably smarter to think of it as a, a scale of 1 to 5 here uh, if you're a lower-level coach because, you know, there's some elite coaches in this game on the default file at least uh, that will look pretty similar to this. So I'm not going to mess with this too much here. Uh, but let's start up here, set my, uh, my baseline here, my general persona. So I am an aggressive style coach. If you saw any of the college basketball uh, series that we've done, you know I, I mean, I'm, I'm a big believer in creating opportunities on offense and on defense, and you can only do that by seizing those opportunities. So aggressive style coach. Uh, I'm relaxed off the field, though. I think that's appropriate. Trait, definitely going with recruiter. I am a through-and-through through true blood recruiter. 
live and die by recruiting. Background. Man, is there a uh, is there a streamer option here? Is there a uh, a writer by chance? Is that is that an option? I don't think it is. So uh, let's just say that I played. All right, I played. I played football. That is true. Not at the collegiate level, but uh, I have I have put pads on before. So uh, that's a good start. Born in Oregon. Born and raised. Gonna keep that there. And uh, and I have my own custom options here that I like. So I like the face of A33. And uh, you'll recognize that, the same guy that coached Hawaii. And close at 35. We got that nice uh, gray, maybe even heather gray, if you will. Uh, nice little hoodie there, so I think that's appropriate. Let's come down to the training ratings. So I don't want to get these too much. I think if we can get these to be like a combined uh, 25 or so, that would be appropriate. So uh, that, would, that would average out to about two and a half for all these. So let's keep these around two or three uh, and then go lower or higher where appropriate. So development, that's fine. Attention to detail, I think I'm a little better than that. Um, youngsters, physical, this is fine. Uh, I'm a QB whisperer. I don't know what else to say. Uh, special teams, that is, that is not my forte. So we're going to have to, we're going to be a little rough on the special teams. Uh, and I'm going to have to deal with that. Offensive line, that's not for me, not for me, not for me. Defensive backs, that is. What are we at here? 5, 7, 9, uh, 13, 15, 16, 18, 20, 22, 25. Perfect. Exactly what I wanted. For scouting, uh, I think we should keep this around 13 to 15 uh, from kind of what the default coaches are. So, uh, you know, overall scouting a 3. Assessing ability is low, but potential is high. I think that's, that's fair. That would go well with my recruiting acumen here. Uh, and then speaking of recruiting, let's go ahead and bump this up here. So what is this at now? A 13? A little better than that. All right, there we go. And then for strategy, uh, try to keep this around 13 to 15 as well. This this feels a little high. But, you know, I mean, if I'm a 34-year-old with no experience getting a job at San Diego State, obviously they're hiring me for something. So uh, maybe, maybe I'm good at coaching offense. I'm okay at coaching defense, and my preparation is uh, is real poor. I don't know. That doesn't that doesn't really feel appropriate. That's... That, Seems almost a little bit offensive, actually. Uh, I'm going to be a little better on offense than defense. I think that's probably appropriate. Um, and, uh, you know, I I'm as prepared as you can expect from a 34-year-old coach. All right. Morale, uh, 100. That's that's fine by me. Happy to have the job. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, intelligence, do like to bump this one up a bit. Uh, that'll help a lot with uh, just general game planning. Charisma is huge for recruiting. Uh, but then I need to knock some of these other things down because I don't want to be an overpowered coach right away. Leadership, I feel like that's fair. Loyalty, look, I'm going to be honest, it's a one. All right, I don't think I'm going to be around here for long. Again, don't tell the athletic director, uh, but uh, I wouldn't be signing any uh, six, seven-year leases. Let's just put it that way. So these all feel appropriate. Uh, you know, I'm a decent motivator, I guess. And there we go. All right, so these offensive and defensive preferences right here, you can technically change these after you set your coach so don't freak out if you're building if tomorrow you're you're buying if you're watching now and you can't wait till tomorrow first access comes out uh and you just want to play right away you don't have to feel like these are set in stone and perfect uh you can edit them after the fact but it does feel a little sketchy too you kind of got to go in edit your coach this screen pops up it just feels a little meh so uh, i like to set these you know you could change these that you know coaches adjust their preferences but I'm going to leave all of these alone because I don't think it's really appropriate for me to be messing with these. So offensive scheme, uh, I am more of a spread guy. Uh, I like taking advantage of, you know, spreading the defense out and then kind of running in unconventional spots or doing short passing game or really just, uh, you know, trying to dictate the tempo and dictate the pace. I, I do like to take shots downfield as an aggressive guy, but uh, that doesn't mean I need to focus my entire offense around it, right? At that point, you become a little stagnant. So uh, I think spread is appropriate for now. Maybe even spread hybrid, but let's stick with spread for now. Um, I've got a balanced focus here. I do need a mixed skill running back, catching fullback. That sounds about right. Uh, tight ends mixed there. I personally prefer a mobile quarterback. Uh, I know some people, especially veterans of the game, uh, don't necessarily love to rely on quarterback rushing. I know it can be a bit inconsistent in previous versions. Uh, but ahead of this this new version, I know there's been a lot of changes in gameplay, and I'm curious to see what QB rushing looks like. So 
let's lean into the mobile quarterback for now. Uh, run preference, perfect. Three receiver set, that is exactly what I like to run out of. Pass preference, um, you know, I think short passing probably is what I'll do, but let's stick with balance for now, see what our personnel shows us. Uh, we're going to go balanced here as well. We do want our receivers to be flexible, uh, but I really want them to be fast. That's kind of important for me, so I uh, probably shouldn't emphasize that as much. Got a little Al Davis streak in me, but that's all right. And then defensive scheme. I'll be honest, I'm probably going to defer to our defensive coordinator here. If you look at this coach defense right here, that's why. Uh, but at least for now, I am a 3-4 guy, born and bred, love it. Key defensive position, you know, you do have to have a good safety, and especially in college. I mean, a, a good safety can be, uh, you know, really the, the safety valve, pardon the pun there, for your defense. So uh, I'll leave it at that. You know what? I like the way that they have me going here. Defensive line use, got to be pass rush, right? And then we need our linebackers to do a little bit of everything. Uh, and I'm going to go mixed for now. I'll see what our personnel looks like and what our defensive coordinator looks like. I do love press man and being able to blitz out of that, but uh, but if we have the personnel to get away, you know, with a zone and kind of thwart the uh, the opponent, so to speak, bait them into mistakes, force turnovers. So I'll leave that as mixed for now. All right, here we go. Let's hop in here and let's see what we have in store. I am so 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 excited about this game. All right. Let's look on the right here. Top 25, right? I'm just kind of curious. Some of the top teams here. So we have the Oregon Geese, our 12. I really thought about taking over Oregon State, but I was a little too worried about having to go against Oregon in recruiting battles. Um, Georgia and Ohio State, 1-2 and two ahead of Alabama. Uh, so, you know, the teams that you would expect here at the top, no real major surprises. Uh, and not really too many non-Power 5 teams here either. Hopefully, we can change that before too long. But... All right, so there is so much to jump into. We're not even going to be able to get to all of it in this episode. But by the end of the episode, we will advance training camps. That is our number one goal, is we are going to set the training camp schedules for our guys, see where they progress, and then we can build on that from there for future episodes. But I kind of just want to play around here because I know you, a lot of you guys are probably as excited as I am just about uh, being able to kind of crack this present open, right? It feels like Christmas in August, so... Uh, I'm just going to kind of tool around, show you guys what we have going here. Um, but let's start with the roster. And let's see what this San Diego State team looks like. So I just got the job, just signed a three-year deal, $3 million a year. What am I going to have to work with? So I'm going to start by sorting overall, um, kind of getting a sense of where we're strong. Okay, so we have a really, really good running back and quarterback uh, but they're both seniors. So that that's going to be a perfect opportunity as a coach to have one year, kind of get things how we want to, hopefully win some games along the way, uh, maybe even threaten for the uh, Rocky Mountain Conference championship here. But then it is going to be quick nose to the grindstone right away uh, to try to replace our three best players who are all seniors here. So, uh, all right, we know that. Let's go ahead and sort by position here. Um, or it might be easier just to do it this way. And I just like to take a look at everybody that we have uh, and go from there. So, all right. Quarterback Scott Taylor. So he is, for all intents and purposes, he's the best player on our team, right? Uh, second highest rating, 99 skill rating over here. He's a senior, redshirt senior. He's been with the program for five years. Uh, I mean, he's, he's the total package. Unfortunately, very slow. 60 speed, not exactly what you'd like to see uh, if you told the person hiring you that you're into uh, mobile quarterbacks, which is what I just did. So not the perfect fit here, but that's okay. When he, when he's got a 94 accuracy and he's got a pretty decent arm as well, uh, you can live with the fact that uh, he's Tom Brady back there in the pocket, uh, and and I don't mean that in a Hall of Fame way. So take a full look at him from this perspective, and then we can just kind of take a peek at the you know the the player profile page and see what we have here, but. Uh, you know, I'm not really too worried about this guy. I think he's going to be a pretty pretty solid captain in this team, I would imagine. Uh, not the best leader, not the best work ethic, so that's kind of a bummer to see. Former three-star guy out of Pennsylvania. But look, he is competitive as you'd want. Uh, 70 competitiveness, you know, 68 team. But I mean, this is, this is good, right? Uh, you know, nothing, nothing alarming here. Um, 
you know, decent morale, all that stuff. So do you like to see that? Doesn't have any traits, and he's a hesitant introvert, but uh, I can deal with that, all right? I mean, he doesn't need to be the life of the party to be the life of the team. And everything else here, player stats, game logs, I mean, none of this is going to be filled out, obviously, we're at the beginning of this this season here, so uh, nothing too crazy to check out here until we fill it out, but all right, Scott Taylor, I mean, we are building this team uh, functionally around him, I would think, unless... Unless Mark Barry, the other senior here, or Frederick Shepard, the hotshot freshman, gives him a run in this first year. We'll see in training camp. I might push these quarterbacks a little bit more just to see which one of them emerges. We do have three really competent options here. Uh, so if there is an unfortunate injury in training camp, it's not going to be the end of the world. But, uh, man, look at how much room these two have to grow. I'm certainly going to push Mark Barry because I think there's more in the tank, and he's a senior. Um you know, I'm almost I'm almost tempted to redshirt him just so that we have a guy next year who will be able to take over. But I think that that would be a bit of a controversial decision for a senior. Not really wanting to set that tempo, uh, you know, with the program that we're redshirting seniors. So, interesting though, he's got a rocket arm. Uh, not quite as accurate. And then Frederick Shepard really kind of struggles in the accuracy department. Uh, but there's stuff to work with here. So that's interesting. All right, moving on. Our running back room, honestly, pretty solid. Robert Greer, redshirt senior, uh, he is he is certainly quick, uh, quick out of the backfield, decent speed here. He's got nice hands, uh, pretty much the best hands of anybody in this backfield outside of uh, freshman Seth Schwartz there. Not much of a blocker, but that's all right. We're not using him for that. Uh, it's 5'7", so diminutive dynamo, if you will. I do like to see that. I think... I think we're going to have a nice rushing attack this year, if I do say so myself. So, uh, all right, fullbacks, they both suck. We can move on there. How is this offensive line? Okay, uh, the interior of our offensive line definitely could use some work. But look at this. Young across the board. Our best guy is a freshman. We have another freshman here. Actually, four of these guys are freshmen, and the other two are juniors. So that is certainly encouraging to see. Uh, they are not the strongest... Not the strongest hog mollies down there. So that's a bummer. Guess we're going to have to have a bit more, you know, maybe maybe kind of a zone rushing attack here. Um, decent pass pro from a few of these guys. Nobody's really the complete package here. So we're going to have to see who steps up on the interior of this offensive line. But that's not as much the case here at tackle. We have three guys, 80, 79, and 79. And again, none of them are seniors. So this is going to be an offensive line that I think could really anchor a solid program in the next few years, and that is awesome to see. That is super encouraging. Um, again, some issues with strength with our best guy here, but he is pretty skilled uh, in, in kind of both the ways we need him to be, so that's encouraging. And then hopefully, there we go. Look at that. Two solid centers. Don't have to worry about that. And our best guy is a freshman. Look at that. This offensive line is nasty. This is going to be awesome. Okay, let's check out our pass catchers here. So we'll start at tight end. A uh, couple of young guys here. Look at that. Sophomore, 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 freshman. think we're building a, a, a core here of a potential conference power over time. So uh, not very fast and not very good at blocking. So I'm not really sure what, what we're looking to see here. Hands aren't great. Uh, huh. Yeah, interesting tight end room, if I do say so myself. But room to grow there. That's fine. Our receivers are just okay. Uh, you know, decent for a program like San Diego State. I can't complain too much. Uh, definitely do have some speed in the room, so I appreciate that. Richard Roberts, I think, is going to be a fan favorite by the end of the year. Uh, but this is an old group. A lot of seniors here. So that's going to be a focus for us when we're recruiting in a, in a few weeks' time here is we're going to have to really go hard on the receiving core, and honestly, maybe even get a tight end that we can trust too, uh, because there's a lot of seniors in this room. Our four best receivers are all going to be gone next year. That is trouble, uh, and a lot of juniors too, so it's not even really like we have a lot of time to kind of build up this core. We're just going to have a very, very young receiving core. That makes me think that we're going to have to lean into the rushing game, and that's fine by me because our offensive line is so, so good. So if we could just have more of a, 
kind of a zone rushing attack, maybe a bit of a spread rushing attack, take our shots downfield with our cannon arm QB, uh, get some play action going. You know, that sounds like a good mix to me. So I'm not too upset about this offense from what we've seen so far. All right, let's go on the other side. Let's start with the defensive line. Start up front, and that is certainly encouraging. Ton of seniors, so that's a bummer. Uh, I don't tend to really build that heavily along my defensive line anyway. I think there's uh, your, your resources can be allocated better elsewhere, uh, unless you know you're kind of the the Alabamas, the Ohio States of the world, and can you know get those guys that are dominant along the line of scrimmage. Um, you know, offensive line, I definitely feel you got to invest there, but defensively, not so sure. But we do have some options here, so that's good. Uh, John Manuel, one of our three best players just by overall rating, at least from what our coaches are telling us. Uh, and that's important to consider, too. If you're new to this game and you're used to kind of the, the Madden way, so to speak, uh, you know, or some of these other big title football games where what you see is what you get, that's not necessarily true with these ratings. These are based on what your coaches are telling you. So if you are not investing heavily in your coaching staff, you could be misled here and you could be starting the wrong guys. So that's why it's important. Keep track of what's going on in training camp. Keep track of the stats during the games. Uh, you know, and just look a little bit further than just what you're seeing from the overall ratings because uh, those won't tell you everything. Even height and weight, right? These are important metrics to look at. I mean, Chester Herrera here, 6'6", 325. I mean, there's no way around it. That's better than 6'1", 296 for the purposes of a defensive tackle. Like, that's just, that's true. So, uh, you know, things like that definitely do matter. So, but anyway, so decent inside uh, interior defensive offense, uh, defensive line here. Let's go to our DNs. Yeah, that is rough. Uh, it's a good thing that we're running, yeah, running a 3-4, because I might even try to move one of these defensive tackles over into the defensive end spot, see if any of these guys, yep, John Manuel can do that a little bit. Uh, Chester Herrera can certainly do that. So Paul Dempsey is skilled in that way. So that's good because I think we're going to have to move one of these guys over because this is, I'm not very encouraged by this, especially, I mean, that is just, you want your defensive end to be a little stronger than that, uh, especially when there's really nothing else exciting across the board. So, um, but that's fine. Good thing we have some depth at that position. Let's go, let's go to the linebackers here. See what we're working with. Oh, not great. Not a great linebacking core. Okay. This might end up having to be a 3-3-5 situation, and we'll see what my defensive coordinator has planned there. I have to meet the staff. Haven't done that yet. Uh, but, man, just looking at these guys, I mean, this is, this is a slow crop. I mean, we have one guy with a speed of uh, – one of, one of our top guys with a speed – over 70 uh, and then a few down here but uh you know okay tacklers i mean I, I would like to see it higher than this i would like to see a little higher intelligence out of the uh, the brains of my defense here so not super encouraged by this only one senior in the group and he's the worst player uh maybe even the worst player on the team so uh so that's okay for future years but right now not encouraged by that all right let's go to the cornerbacks hopefully Better news here, and it looks like there is. All right, Alan Amaral and Albert Lund, uh, probably going to be our one-two here. Maybe Charles Nunez has something to say about that. These two are redshirt freshmen, so that's awesome. We have two 18-year-olds that are going to prominently factor into this cornerback rotation. And look at Albert Lund, 91 speed. Goodness gracious. All right, so he's going to be able to keep up with pretty much anybody in the country. I mean... Uh, you know, relatively speaking, right? I mean, if somebody has a 99 speed, then uh, then good luck, Albert, but good luck anybody in that case. So that's great. Uh, and, and in his case in particular, he's got a low skill here at the position, which means that he has a lot of room to grow. He is not fully formed as a cornerback, but yet he's got that speed. He's got that agility. Oh my gosh, he's a leader, great team player. Look at this. I think we hit a home run with Albert Lund. I think there's a chance that in a few years he could be one of the best players on the team. So that is certainly encouraging. Uh, you look at Charles Nunez, too, as a freshman. He's pretty developed, though. So I don't know if he's necessarily going to grow a ton more than what we're seeing here. But I do like to see that out of our cornerbacks. So that's good. Let's check out the safety room. Oh, we are loaded at safety. Okay, we're definitely going to try to run a 3-3-5. In fact, I might even edit my coach 
and uh, and make me proficient at a three three five and run it because that is what we should be running here. We are stacked in the secondary, and I think that we are going to make some absolute waves defensively if we can utilize these guys properly. So uh, some nice speed on the back end too, especially Raymond Raymond Stowe, Raymond Stow. Don't want to offend the family here, but uh, man, he is small, but he is certainly mighty. I have a good feeling about him. Uh, unfortunately, our best two here are seniors, but that's okay. We have talent in the pipeline. That is great for me. And then, oh, strong safety. We're even better. Look at that. Norman Gamble. Ugh, what a great name for a strong safety. Gamble? Come on now. Who wrote this script? This is incredible. He's quick as well. Just a, a hair shy of 90 speed here. He's already pretty developed at the position, so I'm not sure how much more he's going to improve, but that is fine by me because he's already an 88 and he's 19 years old. Uh, yeah, I, I think that this is going to work out pretty well for us. And then we have Harry Heath, Harry the Hammer here, 80 tackling. So we're going to have some different flavors here. Might even be able to do some different defensive packages, uh, which is going to lead me into something I want to show you guys in just a second here. But let's look at the kicking game here. We're going to have a nice punter competition between Jack Foster and Craig Moran. Is Jack Foster Australian by chance? No, he's not. He's, he's out of Virginia. I don't, it just seemed like a an Australian name there. In fact, I might I might just edit him to be from Australia. I know that that would be kind of I don't know, a little game breaking. Maybe that's probably not not appropriate, right? Hop in here. No, all right. I'm gonna leave that alone. But decent punter here. Our kicking situation uh, a little more settled. I think Daniel Yang is going to go ahead and have this job locked up. Yeah, he's a leader too. Look at that. You always want your kicker to be a leader of the team. And he can kick it far too. 93 kick distance. 100 endurance. Dude could kick all day. He's not going to get tired. Incredible. Sign me up for that. All right. So speaking of sub packages here, I do want to dive into uh, the depth chart for a second here. For something that I find pretty exciting. And that's just all of the things that you can do with your sub packages here. So game planning uh, and substitutions and all that has been a major focus of this game. Uh, I know in the develop, if you've watched the developer dynasties already, uh, Brooks has talked a lot about uh, what he and Asger are doing behind the scenes. Uh, you know, with with working on just giving you as much detail as possible, as much control uh, over the finer details as possible to really build out your game plan. Uh, and just have total control of the program. And one of the ways that you can do that is with these sub packages. So uh, if you look right now, we're on offense. I'm going to just set our depth chart based on what my head coach thinks would be the best depth chart. This is not going to be what we roll with per se. Uh, but this kind of, you know, gives you a basic overview of what we're looking at here. I do love this option just to completely fill it out too. Uh, saves so much time. But let's say... You know, Robert Greer is our number one running back, right? And we like everything that he does. He's our, our you know, mostly three-down guy. But let's say that we like something that Rodney Paris does even more, you know? Let's say he's a speedster. I, I'm not saying that's true. I, I don't remember. But uh, let's say that, you know, he's he's kind of our home run hitter, and we have a third down play, and, and it's a pitch to the outside, and we really want to kind of break this one open. Instead of having to go in the depth chart and... Uh, you know, replace him and, you know, do all that. Maybe maybe there's multiple subs that we want to make. Maybe we want to bring in some of our blocking receivers too, uh, you know, to really kind of spring this one play open. You can make a sub package for the purposes of that play or just the purposes of anything, right? Maybe you have two different uh, offensive packages that you kind of like to go between. You just get, get different looks from. So let's copy from the default offense to save us some time. And then I'm going to put Rodney Paris right here. All right, so now he's our starting running back. I'm going to come over. Instead of Earl Fulton being the receiver here, I want Thomas Lee to be the receiver because he's a better blocker, right? Not necessarily, but, you know, just, just bear with me here. Uh, you know, trade out Jack King, right? I want Frank Bowers to be there blocking. Uh, I want my top tight end instead of it being uh, Vin Vincenzo Martel, which I don't know why you would ever not want it to be Vincenzo. Uh, bring in uh, Robert Narvaez, right? Save this package. And my, honestly, my favorite part of this whole thing is you can name it whatever you want. So I'm going to call this home run. So now I have the home run package right here. So I have my default offense, which we're just going to call the, uh, 
the victory package here, not to be confused with the uh, victory formation. This is our victory package. Then we have the home run package. Everything is the same except we're bringing in our backup running back and a few different receivers and tight ends. So uh, I absolutely love that. I know I'm sure your guys' imagination can run wild here with what you can do with that on offense and on defense here. Like I said, uh, you know we're talking about one of our safeties is kind of more of a center fielder. He's got high speed rating, high agility, uh, you know, high intelligence. And the other guy's a much better tackler, uh, more of a, a downhill type of safety, box safety. So you can have them in different packages. You know, I have uh, who's our our top free sa- or our top strong safety here. Uh, you know, I would I would think. Well, here's a good example too. You don't even have to play a uh, safety. You could put a linebacker back here. Let's say I wanted to make Raymond Glover my strong safety, and I wanted my free safety. Uh, well, I think free safety you got to have somebody who can actually play safety. But there you go, great, great example, strong safety. You can put a linebacker here because that's a sub package that makes sense, right? Uh, you know, you want to get as much tackling on the field as possible for a situation where you think that the opponent is going to run, you can have a sub package that's ready for that, uh, you know, and, and just kind of play around. There's so many things you can do, you know, make your, your outside linebackers, speed rushing specialists, uh, you know, or make them stack linebackers. If you just, you, you know, you're trying to prepare against a specific look. So there's so much you can do here. I'm going to cancel this cause it doesn't really matter. But, uh, but I love what I've seen from the depth chart uh, options here in college football. 2023. Hopping in the chat here, Bree said, this is CF23. Someone told me this is the Urban Meyer, but only in the NFL Junior show. Uh, and then he says, CF23 looking good. He says, like Dante DiVincenzo, uh, in reference to my uh, to my tight end here, Mr. Vincenzo Martel. Uh, so yeah, this is, if you're hopping in late here, this is College Football 23, uh, 2023. This is kind of a first look, so to speak. If you've watched the developer dynasties, you have an idea of what this game is looking like. Uh, but we're kind of playing this for real now. This is actually, uh, the stakes are high. I really want to win this, guys. They they told me that if I can't win a conference championship in my first five years here, that they're actually going to kick me out. Uh, I'm not, not going to be able to help with Wolverine Studios anymore. So uh, so the stakes are very, very high. Uh, I, I got to win a conference championship in the first five years. I need you guys to help me. Uh, Breeze is saying, I like the depth chart. Way easier for me to decide if I ever played this than CB21. And uh, PB21, yeah, this is this is a game that should absolutely be in your wish list uh, right now. And if it's not, it should be in your wish list tomorrow when it comes out in First Access. Uh, first Access is honestly one of the best deals that you can get. Like, it, it's almost thievery. I almost feel like I should tell Gary that you guys are stealing from him. Because First Access, uh, you can get the game for cheaper. Uh, at least that's always been the case in the past. If it's not, then sorry for the false advertising. But uh, you can get the game for cheaper than at full release. You get it earlier. Uh, you have a chance to actually influence some of the features that are going to be in here by playing it, seeing what's there, seeing what's not, making suggestions to the dev team, and you get a free Steam key when the game comes out full release later this month. So you'll be able to play it however you want, whenever you want, and actually dictate what's going to be in the game. Uh, and again, it's it's for the same price, if not cheaper. So uh, if that's not the best deal on the market, I'm not really sure what is. So uh, anyway, all right, let me take my sales hat off here, and let's hop into the strategy screen and take a look. I'm not going to do a lot here right now, just because you know I'd like to look a lot more at the actual team before I set too much of this. But just to give you guys an idea of how much granular detail there is in game planning and just how much you can do, it's honestly unbelievable. It's it's overwhelming in some ways, but the cool part is that you can automate a lot of it. So you can have your, your assistant coaches running it uh, if you feel like you just don't want to do all this game planning. And I'll be honest with you guys, that might be something I do in this stream. I don't know if I'm going to be setting a game plan for every single week. Uh, I have assistant coaches for a reason, right? Uh, you know, if, if I'm going to be doing all the game planning and all the recruiting and uh, you know all of the nurturing of our players' egos, I might as well just fire the assistants. So. But right here, you can set every single scenario... You can set what playbook you want to use, which we have the Jackson Coward offense right now. Uh, that's one of the best offenses in the game, if you haven't heard. Go ahead and install it in your games as well. Uh, but you can set what playbook you want to use and your run pass weight. So higher numbers, more passing. So, you know, let's say on first and 10, you know, kind of a traditional rushing down. Let's say that you want to be proactive. You want to be a little worn and sharp about it. Uh, and you want to pass a lot on first and 10. You can jack this thing way up, 80, 90. Uh, well, an error has occurred if I do zero, so uh, don't do that. But, uh, you know, let me bring this to 75. There we go. That's a good number. There you go. 85. That's an even better number. So let's say I just want to be a really aggressive first down passing team. 
I can do that. And then if I'm not calling the plays during the game, my assistant coaches are going to know, hey, the boss said we want a high ratio of passing on first down. So let's keep that in mind when we call our plays. Same thing on defense, right? Uh, but as it relates to the blitz. So let's say on first and 10, that's kind of a traditionally conservative down. You're expecting a run, so you don't want to sell out, uh, or you know maybe you want to sell out in the blitz to try to stop the run, but obviously if you blitz too much and they bounce it out to the outside, uh, that is no bueno for your defense. So uh, if you want to be a little conservative, right? You can bring this way down. You say first and 10, hey, look, I am, I am sticking back. I don't want anybody to bust anything big here. We'll give them a few yards. They can afford it. That's fine. Or you can go the other direction. Uh, I mean, you guys get the idea, right? You can edit all of this stuff. Uh, and this is just in, in game planning tendencies for every single situation. Come over to the actual game planning tab here. I'm going to create a new one, uh, but I'm not really going to keep this. We'll mess with this later. You can set every element of your offensive game plan from kind of a top-down view. So, uh, you know, my coach default is to have an aggressive attitude. So that's what they have set here. Uh, but I can change that offensively if I want, if I want something different for offense and defense. Tempo. I'm definitely going to have a fast tempo. That's how I run. Uh, my favorite team growing up was the Oregon Ducks, Chip Kelly. I mean, fast tempo. That is where my bread is buttered. So change that there. Up tempo here. Passing preference. You know, we set a lot of these with my coach's preference. Uh, but you can set if you're a team too. It doesn't, not every team has to follow the profile of the coach here. Set your primary receiver. You know, who do I want to be the guy that on third and 10, we really need to catch? That's the guy I'm going to right now, except for Earl Fulton. Uh, I think uh, our friend Vicencio, uh, v v Vin Vincenzo? Yeah, I, I got to sit down with him and make sure I understand how to pronounce his name. But uh, Mr. Martell here, we could set it for him, right? Third down back, goal line back. If you don't have a three down guy that can do everything, you can set that here. Running focus, like we saw earlier, where do I want to run out of? A three receiver set, that's, that's my personal preference. Uh, you know, running back roll, all this stuff, right? You go defense, same thing. All the stuff we set with our coach, but you can set it for your specific game plan. And the coolest thing is you can set this differently for every single game. Let's say, you know, that I have a game plan that's my normal one, but I'm coming up, uh, you know, next week, let's say I'm playing Hawaii, right? And uh, Hawaii, typically an air raid team. And so I'm worried about them just cooking me in the passing game. So defensively, Maybe, uh, you know, I, I run a zone because I'm just kind of worried about, uh, you know, being picked apart and I want to have, you know, kind of throw them different looks and throw them off their game. Uh, defensive line, you know, maybe instead of a, a mixed, you know, I already have it at pass rush. Let's say normally I do mixed. I can go pass rush. Uh, linebacker, you know, focus on coverage. Do that. Create a new game plan. And then now you have a game plan specifically for the Hawaii Spartans or whomever you might play. Uh, so that's just, I mean, there, there's so many different ways that you can attack this from a strategic perspective. It's honestly, uh, pretty, pretty incredible. Even target player here. This allows you to focus on one player on the other team that you want to shut down. Richard LeBron. I mean, that name certainly sticks out kind of terrified of what he might do. Uh, so, you know, maybe we focus on Richard LeBron. Don't let him beat us in this game. This is a new thing for this year as well. Substitution logic. That was another big focus for the devs uh, is to tweak the substitution logic to allow you to have as much control as possible over when your guys come out. I know that was something that people in the community mentioned. They were a bit frustrated that they, uh, you know, maybe they wanted their starters to play the entire game and the assistant coaches were just taking them out when they were getting tired. Uh, and you say, hey, I, you know, I don't care if they're absolutely gassed. I don't care if they can't breathe. I want them out there. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that, but uh, that's something that you can do now. Uh, you know, you can set this energy threshold. So once your energy goes below that, uh, use the backup until it recovers above the max. So you can set these way, way, way lower or way, way, way higher. Let's say you have a super deep team. Let's say you're Ohio State, you're Alabama, uh, you know, you're, uh, you're Louisiana State, and you are so deep that you don't really necessarily need your best player on the field at all times. You just want somebody who's not fatigued because you're two, three deep at a lot of your positions, you can do that. Uh, you know, a, a school like San Diego State, as you guys saw with the depth chart, we only have a few players who are actually good. Um, so, you know, we, we would handle this differently than another team would. So, again, there's, there's just so much. There's counter strategies, there's, uh, you know, focuses that you can have against your team that you're playing this upcoming week. Coming to formations, you can change all of these in terms of the percentile. Uh, of how often you're running your different personnel packages. So you remember, we set our victory package. 
and our home run package. You can set how often when that package comes in to a certain offensive formation, how often that package is running versus passing. So remember our home run package? It was built around a home run rushing attack. So you can set this way, way, way higher. Uh, my, my buttons are getting kind of all mixed up here, so pardon me. But uh, whatever, you get the idea. You can set this to have a much higher run percentage because when that package comes in, you are run focused, right? Uh, you can go all the way across the board on defense. Same thing here. Set your pack. I mean, just a, a, a mind-boggling amount of uh, a strategy that is at your disposal. Play analysis. There's nothing here now because we haven't done any plays in the history of this uh, this playthrough here. But when you, any veterans of the game that know this, when this is filled out, it's incredible. It gives you such awesome insight, intel. Uh, data for you to be able to make your decisions on which plays are working, which formations are working, in what situations they're working. So let's say I'm passing a lot on first and ten, uh, and it's just simply not working based on you know the results of the games. That's an indicator to me to maybe tweak that, and I should be changing things up. Uh, you know that my my first instincts are not correct. And then custom playbook. I mean, if you guys thought that you had enough control over everything else, uh, go ahead and make a custom playbook because that is where you can get uh, real silly. We're going to stick with the Jackson Coward offense and the Jackson Coward defense. Like I said, those are two of the best in the country. Uh, but, you know, maybe we'll we'll tweak those at some point down the line. So, as we're kind of wrapping up here, let's go ahead and hop into training camp and let's get this thing locked in. So, we have all of our players coming up here. And one subtle thing, I know Brooks mentioned this on the Developer Dynasty. There's just so many things that they've changed about this game uh, that it's hard for him to even remember the things to highlight. So I'll go ahead and do that for him here. I don't think I've seen this on the Developer Dynasty, and it's super small. You know, it's nobody's going to buy the game because of this. But just this, a simple addition like this, check boxes on the left, so that if I want all of my quarterbacks to be on a certain schedule, I can assign that schedule to them. So let's, let's make one here. Let's create a new schedule. Uh, right now, every single player is 5-5-5-5, five, 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 five. so you have 25 points to work with in training camp. Uh, as you can read in the bottom here, you can assign all 25 points, but if you get too close to that, it's pretty likely uh, that you're going to run the risk of injury with those guys. The AI is running at a total of 20 points. I think that's appropriate for us to do as well. So I'm going to leave pretty much all of these at default, unless there's players that I want to specifically focus on. And in this case, there are. The quarterbacks, I would like to change. So let's create a new schedule here. Um, we're going to call it, uh, what should we call this? I'm going to call this extra here, all right? So the the extra schedule is going to be a little bit more, let's see, what do we want to add here? I'm going to bring these guys up to 22. I know that feels a little risky, but uh, I really want one of these players to separate themselves. So... I think we're going to bump up positional drills and for quarterback, you know, game tape really is not, not a bad one to do. Um, but I don't know if I want to spend the entire training camp on just them focusing on game tape. So uh, I think I'm going to do physical training here. So there we go. So now we have these four quarterbacks. I'm going to go ahead and hit assign selected to schedule and now they're all on the extra schedule it's just it's so seamless i think that's i just love that feature um you know that's something you used to have to every single one of these players come down and move them down and now you just have this little checkbox does it for you absolutely seamless um so let's sort by overall and let's sort by position and just see if there's any other players that we feel the need to kind of do something similar with um you know i would like one of these two running backs to maybe separate themselves. So maybe we can put these guys on the extra schedule. You know, I like to do this in positions where, you know, we do have some surplus and it's not going to kill us if we uh, have an injury at that spot. So, uh, you know, we're going to run our backups a little heavy here. And let's go down the line here. You know, tight ends, uh, I, I kind of feel like, I'm just going to do this for now. Uh, I kind of feel like there's some meat on the bone here. They're both 19. Uh, you know, I, I want something out of this tight end position. So hopefully we can get a little bit more out of that. Um, our receivers, as we know, uh, we have the the, uh, the older guys who are all you know equipped 
and then we have these younger guys who just are not. So uh, I'm going to work them all pretty hard. I think some of these players might end up being redshirted, so if they get hurt, you know, I'm not, not terribly concerned. I mean, I'm going to have to let their family know, and that does suck. But uh, other than that, I think that's fine. And then offensive line, you know, I, I just don't have enough confidence about who this is going to be. I don't really want to run any risks here. Um, you know, we do have a young center. Maybe push him a little bit. He's young. He's spry. And he's got a lot of room to grow. So that's fine by me. Push those guys a little bit. Uh, leave that alone. And then a defensive tackle. You know, we're going to push these guys a little bit. This is our first training camp with San Diego State. They have to know, hey, we are not messing around. You know? This is, it is time to grow. So, these guys are, are old, though. I'm not really sure if they're going to take too kindly to this, but that's fine. You know what? It is boot camp here in San Diego. Okay. And then, you know, defensive end, they're all pretty awful, but, you know, what are you going to do? Scroll down here. Don't think we need to do too much with these linebackers. Uh... You know, maybe these guys, just because they are young and there's a lot of uh, area, a lot of room in their game for growth. And then look at this, Norman Gamble. I mean, he is an absolute stud, but he's so young. I just, I want to see what he can do. And I'll do the same thing. Gosh, I really don't want to lose Albert Lund. Don't want to lose Albert Lund's to injury, but we're pretty deep here at the quarterback position. So, um, going to have all these guys give it their best effort. Same thing with free safety. I just... You know, I believe in these these youngins. And then let's see. Jack Foster, Craig Moran. You know, I've always been a, a distance guy. So Jack Foster is going to have to prove it to me. So there you go. Jack Foster, a little extra for you there. All right. So I think that's it. I think we've done it. Uh, except let's have somebody for the head coach to focus on, somebody for the OC and the DC to focus on. So... You know, I think the most important player on the team this year is probably going to be either Scott Taylor or Robert Greer, but I'm not really sure if those are the guys that have the biggest room to grow, and that's what I would like to do here. I want to focus on somebody that I think that I can really uh, try to groom. I do have some expertise in the quarterback uh, position here, so I think I'm going to take a shot here at Frederick Shepard. And really try to help him get the most out of his game. Because I don't think he's going to be ready to start now. But he is a freshman. He feels like he might be the future of the program here. He's got a huge arm. Uh, and, you know, and he's, he's, he's intelligent enough, but his accuracy is lacking. Uh, he's the fastest guy in the quarterback room. So I just I want to see what more I can get out of him. Offensive coordinator, you know, probably let him focus on either Scott Taylor or uh, or Robert Greer here, just because those guys are going to be so pivotal to our success. Um, you know, I think maybe Robert Greer might be the call here. And then defensively, I mean, you guys, you guys already know, right? It's Lund. It's got to be. It's got to be Albert Lund. He's a, a future superstar on this team, in my opinion. Um, unless we want to go with one of the safeties. That would be the only direction that I think we could go here uh, you know, is maybe grabbing one of these young safeties like Norman Gamble, but he's already kind of reached peak. So I think we stick with Lund there. And then before we, before we head out, I do just want to learn a little bit about our coaching staff just to make sure that we're kind of optimizing those spots here. So Brian Moore, nice to meet you, Brian. Kind of an odd situation. They hired the uh, head coach and didn't, didn't really let him pick his own offensive and defensive coordinators, but that's fine. So let's see what Brian's good at here. Brian is flexible. That's good to know. Uh, Brian is very charismatic, I could tell from the moment I met him. And he's a good leader. Could also tell. Nice firm handshake. Big fan of Brian Moore here. Uh, not the best at scouting. Not the best at coaching offense, which uh, is kind of a problem when your job is to coach offense. But, you know, that's fine. He wants to be aggressive on offense. Silent, strong leader. He does his job meticulously without making unnecessary waves. All right. Love to see that for Brian. He's a Milford man. like to see that. All right. Runs a West Coast hybrid offense. Mostly runs out of the power formation. It's about taking what the defense gives him. Blah, blah, blah. It kind of sounds boring, but, you know, again, Milford man. That's kind of what I expected. Uh, all right. 
Probably going to have to override Brian Moore here with a lot of different things. But he has a pipeline in California, and he's from Utah. So love to see that, Brian. Uh, I think he's going to be pretty helpful in the recruiting game there with the uh, California connection. And then John Pritchard, this crotchety old guy. Joe, well, I guess he's only 47, but favors an aggressive defense. He loves football. Well, that's good. That's step one. Uh, and it shows that it, this is his dream job. Well, I'm really proud of him. His eagerness to discuss all aspects of the game is infectious in the organization. So pretty much the opposite of Brian Moore. Um, he is as flexible as ever. Very charismatic. Now that I could certainly tell when I met John Pritchard. Leadership, loyalty, love to see it. Excellent scouter when it comes to the recruiting game. Not that great at coaching defense, but look, John, I'll give you a pass because you're so enthusiastic about your dream job. That's just that that you know really rubs off on me as well. Uh, he runs a four three hybrid. The onus is on the safeties in his system, zone coverage, able to shut down the passing game. I don't hate it. Uh, not really in love with the 4-3 hybrid thing. Uh, kind of more of a 3-4 guy, and I think our personnel is is even more kind of a 3-3-5 situation. Um, but that's okay. I think that John Pritchard is going to be good enough from a coaching perspective to really help us out there. So we have $11.5 bucks to work with overall. Uh, about 6 and a half of that is going to the staff. Uh, so we'll have about $5 million to work with in recruiting. So we'll get to that in a future episode. We just make sure on the training screen that everything worked here. I think I clicked on strategy on accident. Yep, I did. Beautiful screen, but not what I was looking for at the moment. All right. So just to make sure all of this worked with our training, it did. That is good to see. So let's go ahead and advance. Complete training camp. And there we go. Just like that, it's complete. This game, I will say, by the way, uh, this game's been loading incredibly quickly for me. And I was not expecting that on a, on a pre-first access build. Uh, this thing is quick. It simulates things very, very quickly. Uh, doesn't take me very long to get from screen to screen. I've been really impressed with that. So uh, when you click on the wrong button and then you click on something else at the same time, that, that doesn't really help. But uh, I've been very, very impressed with that. All right. So let's check out what happened here. Okay, looks like Ricky Loveless lost eight. No love lost there for Ricky. Uh, yeah, not the best camp for him. Ricky, Raymond, and Ray, the three R's, just kind of messing around in camp, not really trying to get better. But look at this, Paul Dempsey, goodness gracious. He gained 15, now he's at 85. Well, that work ethic certainly would explain that. Incredible. Oh, look at that, Vincenzo. Vin, Vin, Vince, Vincenzo? Vincenzo Martel? I don't know why this name really... My, my best friend in high school was named Vincenzo. I don't know why this is... I'm struggling so much, but... 19-year-old uh, tight end making big gains. Look at that. 86 overall. Massive work ethic there. Super competitive guy. That is what I like to see from Vincenzo Martel. And any quarterbacks? No, nope. Mark Berry barely improved. Scott Taylor improved a little bit. Uh, you know, nothing, nothing too crazy here. Check the email, see if we learned anything here, but, uh, I think it's just going to say everything that we've seen. But man, interesting camp from a few guys. Yeah, Loveless can't seem to get out of his own way. I mean, <laughs> isn't that the classic story, right? Uh, Glover, huge disappointment. Dempsey, yeah, exceeding everybody's expectations, mine included. Uh, and then Lyles, need to look at possible, possible alternatives. That sounds like they're going to kill him. I don't I don't really agree with that, but uh, let's see. Where did anybody else improve here big time? Scott Taylor got a little faster. That's good because he was slow as a tortoise. Now he's just slow as a sloth. Uh, nothing else really notable here. So, all right. I think, I think that that'll do it here. Unless any of you guys in the chat want to see anything in particular, have any questions, but we're right up on the hour mark, which I think is the perfect amount of time here for this first episode of Draft Day Dynasties playing this new game. As you guys can tell, I am I am stoked uh, for this new new career. I think it's going to be pretty fun. Uh, so in the next episode, uh, we're going to focus on setting our depth chart and really getting our game plan ready to go. Uh, for this game, recruiting starts in week one. So obviously by week one, we need to have everything else set too. So I think next episode, uh, we're going to focus on 
setting the depth chart, getting our game plan where we want it to be, setting our red shirts, and just kind of getting a better sense of this San Diego State team so that we can understand really what our expectations for, should be for this year, uh, you know, which players we know we can rely on, and kind of cater to our personnel from there uh, and try to build a winning program for year one with that elite sophomore quarterback running back duo. So, uh, But we'll cut it off there. Really appreciate you guys watching this episode. Uh, a few things before we go. First thing, if you're not already subscribed to our Twitch channel, I don't know what you're waiting for. Uh, if you have an Amazon Prime account, you get one free subscription every month just by linking it with your Twitch account. Uh, so honestly, I would take it a little bit personally if you don't use it on us. Uh, you know, we, we spend a lot of time every week uh, putting together these episodes, putting together the games. I wouldn't actually take it personally, but it would mean a lot if you guys subscribe. Uh, and especially if you're subscribing without the free sub from Amazon Prime, you are, you are an extra special person in my heart. Uh, if you do subscribe, either way, Shoot me a message on Twitter or Discord with a screenshot letting me know that you subscribed. And I will share with you, this is not a joke, I will share with you my favorite beach spot in San Diego. It's a secret one. No one really knows about it. It doesn't show up on Google Maps, I don't think. Uh, not after I campaign Google to take it off. So I'm pretty much the only person that knows about this beach. So subscribe to this. I will tell you the most beautiful place to see, uh, see the sunset and the moon rise. And Sandy, you, you guys think I'm joking. I'm not joking at all. Uh, second thing, tomorrow, don't forget to post about your teams and careers with hashtag Franchise Friday on Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, Discord, Slack, the original forums at wolverinestudios.com. If there's other social medias, let us know. We'll be on there too. Uh, and let us know what's going on with your guys' careers. I have a feeling I know uh, what the focus of tomorrow will be because tomorrow is the release of First Access for college football 2023. So uh, I have a feeling many, many of you are going to be launching your careers there. So I really am excited for that. I want to hear what's going on with all of your careers. Hashtag Franchise Friday tomorrow. And like I mentioned at the top, definitely check out our Draft Day Academy series as well. If you like what you see here, I think you're going to like what you see there as well. Uh, we've been putting those together. We have two that are live right now, another one coming shortly. Uh, and we're just going to keep pumping those out. Let us know what videos you guys want to see what things you're wanting to learn, uh, and we're going to go ahead and attack those areas, trying to make these videos to help you guys better understand the game uh, and make this a more easy and accessible game. This one, this release, and all of them uh, for anybody who is interested in Wolverine Studios titles. So, like I said, if you have any ideas for videos you want us to, uh, to create or just any questions about this game or... You just want to chat about how awesome uh, this College Football 2023 game is and what your plans are with it. Uh, you know where to find me on Twitch and Twitter at CJXandCowart, on our Discord server, or anywhere on the Wolverine Studios forums. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.